is silver too. Oh, senpai, sign my cover, please. Come in the sign. Spend like so much. I wish I could go to this convention, but I can't go because I don't have enough money. I wish I could go. Don't worry. You say what? that, but you giggle. <laughs> you know Besides, when Cal when California detaches from the continent and drifts into the ocean. You'll be that much closer. Yeah, but it's California. Yeah, they hold good conventions. It's sometimes. California? <laughs> Florida's in California, right? Yeah, Flor- what? Florida? Florida's in California? No. No, okay. What? I'm just asking. I, I don't... Flor- F- Florida and California are two very, Separate very states. different states uh... on opposite sides of the country. I was oh. never good in geography class, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Nor am, nor am I, but I, I can at least attest to that with great confidence. See, I, I'm a, a dirty Asian who doesn't know anything. <laughs> that joke went out the window. <laughs> I can't really say to anything after that. Yep. Yeah, I, I I think you can say that about yourself, but we can't build off that joke. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we're the jerks. <laughs> uh, boys. Oh, but anywho, today we are going to review My Little Witch Academia episode, sorry, season one, episode four, uh, Nightfall. In this episode, Ako, Lote, and Susie re- receive detention for stealing a tart. I repeat, for stealing a tart. I'm going to let it linger. Oh, schools tend to frown on tardiness. <laughs> nice. So anyway, they are for, they are also forbidden to go into town, even though Lotte is dying to go to a book event. So, before we start, uh, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, as someone who's been to book signings, uh, nothing on this scale, but it, this has been a fun episode to see. It's very heartwarming, and I'd say that it's uh, the first real big defining moment for Lotte. She's sort of been the quiet observer or unwilling accomplice up until now. But here she gets to show her fur, her full fangirlness. And it is scary. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> very scary. I'm afraid. Uh, what about you, Tara? Well, I've never really been to a book signing or anything, but this kind of hit me on another personal level back when I first joined a certain fandom. Oh, uh, is that the Digimon fandom? No. <laughs> the Pokemon fandom? No. Oh, man. Digimon, Digimon fandom, Digimons are the fanboys. I mean, I, I used, I, I watched Digimon back when I was young. Oh, yeah, same here. Oh, man. What other fandoms could you be in? Hmm. Hmm, that's a mystery. Dragon Ball. Yeah, Dragon Ball. Nope. Oh, okay, I give up then. Oh, was I supposed to give you an answer to that? <laughs> I mean, continue your story. It's your part. I'm just... <laughs> I was just going to say, it, it reminds me of the story where I was in the, where I first joined the MLP fandom. Oh, yeah. That's it? That's, that's all? <laughs> well, I I don't want to go too much in detail. That's for my final thoughts. <laughs> okay. Well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> that's for <laughs> me. This episode is fun. I, I like it a lot. Silver was right. Uh, it does um, open up a lot about um, Lotte and her characteristics, like. Uh, I think this is the perfect episode for her to have her, well, um, blooming or character blossoming and stuff. Like, we get to know her as a character even more. Because uh, Season 1, Episode 1 is going obviously going to go to Akko. Uh, and Season Episode 2, Akko also. And, you know, we all, we got Akko a lot. Like, 1, 2, 3. Now it's uh, Lotte's time. And I'm also guessing in future episodes, we also get Su- Susie's and stuff. So, uh, character development is always awesome. So those are my favorite episodes. And this one, we get to learn a lot about uh, Lotte. And well, yeah, I'm not going to spoilers. If you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. And well, we start off with Lotte in bed playing with her smartphone or smart globe. Yeah, th- this was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome tech. Like, um, mostly I'm, think- I'm thinking she's sending emails and whatnot, but 
Um, more, of, I think it's more of sending a text message. Yeah, probably. So anyway, Lotte is conversing with another fan of a book that she loves called Nightfall, and she's very excited to meet with uh, the author because this is the first time that the author will kind of reveal uh, themselves. And is this out of the ordinary? Well, I mean, there's certainly a history of reclusive artists. Uh, J.D. Salinger, I think, was very uh, misanthropic at times. So he stayed out of the public light and didn't do a lot of book signings for a good long while. All right. Does he reveal his face by any chance? No? Yes? Well, well, this was an era before the internet, so of course his photo was on the book. Ah. Because sometimes some artists are really reclusive that they don't want to reveal anything about themselves at all. And that's how ghostwriters exist. Although, I, I can I just comment that Nightfall, mm-hmm. you basically named your book after a, a comic series where Batman gets his back broken. Uh, I remember that one. But anywho, carrying on, um, in the next scene or in the morning, they are called to the principal's office because... Somehow, a pie was stolen from the kitchen. Oh, dearie me. And uh, it seems that Ako and her group of friends were the culprits. Oh, no. How such heresy. What would they do? Ako just rebuts and says, We did not steal a pie. It was a tart. (laughs) A tart. And we do not like the eating... (coughs) Well, we do not like the menu of the school. It's always potato this, potato that, potato pieces and whatnot. We want something more. We the audience or we the students want more versatility, more options for our food. And well, long story short, they got grounded. <laughs> or detention, yes. So now they have to help the um groceries or help carry the groceries to the kitchen, and also spend some extra class with um, te- oh, Miss Ursula. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, they don't have permission to go out of the school. And hearing that, Lotte begs and pleads that she can go out for the day because she wants to go to a book signing and whatnot. And the principal just says, no, not a chance. And yeah, she's crushed by this let's see uh then well intro music happens so guys what do you think Silver? i'm gonna say akko's not showing her best in this episode at least at first because she is basically uh sabotaging her friends just for a diverse palette and akko she's always all in all energy all the time 100 percent. but she's very uh, unaware of what's happening around her. And that really, really puts a strain on her friendship. It was like that with the uh, special we saw as well. Uh, yes, that one, the Enchanted Parade. Yeah, that that was a real strain on her relationships, I think. So, seeing how... I, I'm glad that Susie was there to talk. She was blunt, but she, she told Akko what needed to happen. You know, your you, your friend is in trouble because of this escapade. We need to do something to fix this. Or more specifically, you. But I think it's a good motivation for Lotte. And I love the, the little owl icon on her instant <laughs> instant orbing. Yeah. That's what I'm going to call it. I- instant orbing. All right, all right. Uh, Daryl, what about you? Well, I kind of have to be silver. This wasn't really Ockel's best. And she's basically talking back to the teachers. I mean... If you did that nowadays, you get detention or whatever. And, like, what are you doing, Akko? Well, Akko did get detention, so... No, they did after, but, like, what, that's what I mean. But, like, like, you don't talk back to the teacher. Like, you you crazy? You don't do that. <laughs> and she doesn't really think to consider that, you know, her friends are going to be going down the ship with her. And it's like, come on, really? not Like, again, not really the brightest or the greatest of her at the moment. I can agree with Lotte on how being super excited about going to the, I guess you could say this convention, because it reminds me of the time when I was super excited to go to BronyCon for the first time, but then my mother didn't want me to go. I'm like, no, please let me go. I'll do this and I'll do that. My mother's like, sorry, you can't go. And I'm like, how could you do this to me? 
How old were you back then? Uh, it was two years ago, 2017. So not that, not that young. All right. All right. Oh, I'll see you're only like 15 then. <laughs> yep. I mean, there's more to the story of how I went to the first BronyCon, but you know that's to be continued. See, <laughs> now we got two stories here. We got yeah. Little Witch Academia and my story. All right. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. Uh, anyway, carrying on. So, Lotte explains why she needed to go out this weekend or the weekend. And it's because the 365th volume release event of Nightfall is going to happen. And the author is going to make an appearance. What was her name again? Uh, Annabelle Carme? Something like that. So, uh, this is something that Lotte is really excited about. She's a big fan of the book series. And she explains what the book series is all about. I'm just going to summarize this for you guys at home. And technically, it's going to be um, mostly 50% or 60%, maybe 99% wrong. Um, just imagine Twilight. But... Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight? I guess it's kind of Twilight. Ah. It basically is Twilight. Ah. I mean, come on. She, ah. she talks about this girl falling in love with a young man who happens to be a vampire. Yeah. And there's action, romance, and drama yeah, and stuff werewolf. like that. And Lotte's favorite character is a werewolf. Yeah, yeah true that, true that. And the book has been going on for 364 chapters now. And the 50, wait, uh, 365th is coming out. So that's been going on, and the book series has been going on for <coughs> almost a hundred plus years. Woo! Yeah. Ah, I did keep saying that name, and it's not the Twilight I like. Yeah. Well, it's not like we're saying it's Twilight Sparkle. Yeah, true that. Okay, I can. I I won't add that. Yeah. But okay, when they actually get there, however. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let me carry on then. Um, when it comes night, Lotte kind of messaged her friend saying that she won't be able to make it because, well, she's grounded and whatnot. And um, Akko pops in saying that, Lodi, we got a plan. This plan is amazing. You're going to like it. Come, follow us. And said plan is after carrying all the supplies to the kitchen or the barn, I don't know what that's called, they finish and pack up and, well, they hitch a ride in the supply truck. And, yeah, them girls going to be in trouble, yo. I'm just wondering how the driver doesn't notice the extra weight. They're little girls. They don't put that much weight. If they were recklessly stealing tarts, I kind of wonder. But anywho, once they escape, Akko says like, Oh, I wonder if this is okay. I mean, they're kind of breaking the rules and whatnot. This is uncharacteristic like for Ar Lotte. And she says, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelette or something like that. <laughs> and, yeah. Wow, she she is really into this book series. She she doesn't care. She she wants to go. So they are um, once they are near the town, they hop on their broom and head to town. Ako asks, "Why couldn't we just fly all the way here?" And the same explanation happens before because we don't have enough power to fly to town. And with that, I'm gonna pause here. So, guys, what do you think? Security is rather poor at this school. If you, I get that you would inspect uh, trucks coming in, but wouldn't you want to give a little look going out? You have magical artifacts, school, uh, young women who are under your uh, care. Yet, no, the the troll at the at the gate. I think it's a troll. He just said, waves goodbye. So very polite troll. I'll give him that. I kind of picture that he has like a, a name badge or something. Welcome to this school. I am here as your helpful assistant. Just move on. <laughs> oh, <boy>. Security guard. <laughs> uh, all right. So anyway, um, Hera, what about you? I do like that one little detail where uh, Lotte was looking on the orb and she's like, let's see the comments on these on the recent book or whatever and then you see like basically youtube comments one person's like recent chapters of nightfall have been tanking hard and then the other one's like no one asked you to read <laughs> and it's like wow that's like youtube ain't it yep. <laughs> and then 
security, on the other hand, I mean, the Cyclops just looks at the driver through the window, and then he's like, no, that's it, you're good to go. Doesn't even check through the back window to see if, like, you know, he might be stealing, stealing anything. Yep, I'm. we are in agreement here. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, carrying on. Um, once they reach Town Square, it is like a convention. Like, the town itself is full of nightfall cosplayers, um, entertainers, and whatnot. Oh, there's a lot of banner. Um, this is a dream come true for Lotte. Uh, Aku doesn't really understand what's going on and whatnot. And, yeah, she she's just, well... Enjoying the moment. And Suchi, I don't see her around. So that means she's just hanging, I guess. Oh, she's off poisoning someone. <laughs> I guess. And Lotte is just impressed by the cosplayers all, all around this area. And she stumbles upon a big clock tower, Big Ben, something like that. And Big Ben is trying to buy a pen of a kid like those that that pen is very rare like one of 20s made and yeah I, I, I think that kid needs an adult and Lottie jumps in Lottie jumps in swoops the big Ben away and Lottie admires the clock tower and says that you're this character or this yeah this character from this time and this time and, this time. and the clock tower is impressed that somebody recognized her costume and whatnot. And they instantly become good, good friends. Yay. <clears throat> Friendship is magic. Yay. And at the same time, too, we see Hana and Barbara. They are doing some shopping in town. <laughs> and it seems that Barbara wants to go check out the nerd fest so that she can laugh at them. ho, <laughs> ho. Shall we go and point and laugh? <laughs> well, she, she says that, but you can tell from her tone. Oh, yes, totally. totally. Although, you know, I'd completely forgotten their names were Hannah and Barbara. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I, I did, heard that. I'm like, wait, was, is that really their names? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, double dang. <laughs> Hannah and Barbara. There's one of those um, Easter eggs that I remember from the first... Uh, the pilot episode was really cool. So anyway, I'm going to stop here. What do you guys think, uh, Silva? Okay, you you could say that this is that the story is based on Twilight, yeah. but the the fandom I think is Harry Potter because I've never known. Okay, I don't know how many cosplays you can really do of uh, of Twilight, man, yeah. <laughs> because it's basically just guys walking around with their shirts off <laughs> and glitter. Don't forget glitter. And I, I'm trying to, <laughs> but Harry Potter. I mean, you've got everyone can dress up as different wizards and witches, and uh, even big towers. I'm sure someone has tried to cosplay as the shrinking bus from Harry Potter. Okay, and if not, why not? <laughs> and so, therefore, so that's what I think of when I see this fandom, and. That's more fun in my eyes. Uh, but with Hannah and Barbara, and one of them is like, oh, how about we go over there so we can laugh at them? Uh, it's kind of like Diane in some ways, where she's trapped by her station. You're, when you put yourself in a position where you're only powerful if you judge or, or diminish someone else, then you're trapped. Because you can never then just be. You always have to be on the attack or you're nothing. And that's tragic. In all honesty, I don't feel it that way with um, Diana. Because to me, she's a confident uh, young woman who do what she wants. And if she wants to go to a nightfall convention, she goes to it without um, worrying about uh, being judged. Because... It's a book series. I like this book. What? You don't like reading? What are you, some kind of monster? I wouldn't say not more of a monster, more of an egghead. Everybody mm. reads. I'm the best in class. I don't read. Uh, I'm just saying for Diana's sake here. Just <laughs> I know, I know. 
Well, see, I'm thinking of at the end of the Enchanted Parade where she's trying to cheer Akko and the others on, and then she looks very embarrassed. I don't think she can do as much as she would want. As you say, I think that the expectations were family and her status. She has to conduct herself in a very specific manner. True, true, but that doesn't mean she can't go to a book fair or something like that. I mean, this is something that she might enjoy. But in this scenario here, we oh. have no idea, so... Yeah. Well, I could... I have a counter-argument, but it would involve spoilers for later on. So, so we will have to revisit this topic. Oh, true, 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 true. No problem, no problem. Um, Tara, what about you? Well, this is a this is pretty much the section where I could really, really relate to it. Because, you know, Lotte's going around and be like, Oh, look at this, dressed up as this. Oh, I can now talk to someone who knows about the book more than me and stuff like that. And, and I'm like, wow, this reminds me of me when I first went to BronyCon. And I see all these people in these cosplays. And I see people in like a giant pony outfit. And then I see this one that's well detailed of Nightmare Moon. And oh my goodness, I was so excited to be, finally be there. <laughs> But um, back to the show. <laughs> uh, I I have I was a bit concerned about the c- clock lady. I guess you could say going right up to a child while the child doesn't have a parent around. The clock the clock lady is just like name your price. I'll buy that pen off of you. Like it's a child. What are you doing? And then adult. and then the whole point of uh, you know let's let's go to those let's go to the convention and point and laugh at these people for liking a silly book. Ho ho ho. <laughs> Okay, but still, but still. Um, anyway, <clears throat> going to carry on. So, Lotte is very excited to go to the hall and just meet up with the author and whatnot. And they got to their... S- uh, no, uh, I think here is where she retells the story of how she in- started being a fan of Nightfall and whatnot. Uh, long story short, uh, when she was a kid, being uh, when, she, when she was young, Living as a witch's family or something like that, she gets bullied all the time. A lot of mean kids. That seems to be the MO for most of this kind of story, ain't it? <clears throat> but anywho. When you well, when you introduce powers beyond everyday life, I'm sure the culture gets very full of itself. Yeah, true that, true that. But anywho, um, <clears throat> A lot of dancing kids around Lotte, and Lotte got tired of those dancing kids. So she went to the library to, well, kind of take her mind off things. She took up a book, and said book is Nightfall. Long story short, um, it became one chapter, two chapters, and then she read all 364 of them. And then she is a fan. She loved everything about the series and all the subtle um, happenings going on in said book. She is a fan. And I bet she writes fan fiction on the side. <laughs> Slash fiction. Yes, yes. So, anywho, they go to their seats <coughs> and the host announced Annabelle, the author, and Annabelle's young kid. What? This? Like, I wasn't expecting this. What? <laughs> so, anywho, every. Body is enchanted except for Ar- Akko because Akko's just saying she's a kid. Yo, well, she's she's a kid. Um, are you guys not freaked out by this? But anywho, they keep watching the program or presentation, and they have a contest of sorts. Whoever can answer the question correctly can get up on stage and well win a prize, something like that. And the questions are. Let's just say that <coughs> if you're a fan of the show or you're a fan of the series, you'll know. And it seems that Barbara is raising her hand because she wants to win the prize too. And Hannah just says, wait, you know this? No. But, and Barbara just says, oh, no, no, I'm just stretching. Oh, yes, I, I, I'm stretching. See? <laughs> See? Well, that's why it's kind of tragic. You can't even do what you like when you're when you're that proud. Yeah, kind of true. <coughs> but long story short, as time goes on, there are only two finalists who are good enough to answer the game show. And that is Lotte and the big clock costume person. And Lotte just 
silently ask, um, are you Big Ben 360 something XX Sephiroth XX? And the Big Ben uh, character says, yes. So cool. They're, they're their best friends meeting each other for the first time on stage. <laughs> Much awesomeness. So the host asked a question. And before he could finish asking the question, Big Ben uh, answered the question. And although she's not wrong, the question is not finished and she kind of got the question wrong. And the said question is, what was the flower beside the bakery? And even Lotte got a hard time discovering or answering this question. After looking around for clues, she looks at uh, Annabelle's phone cover and sees flowers. Um, what was they called, Silver? Uh, unfortunately, I'm blanking. I think it's hydrangea. Yeah, something like that. Thank you, Tara. Hydrangea. So, after answering their hydrangea, she won. And Annabelle uh, hands Lotte a prize. And said prize is a pen. An awesome looking pen. And before anything happens... Annabelle says, okay, you're now the new Annabelle and you have to write the book. See ya! She teleports out and Lotte is like, wait, what? What, what happened? I, I'm so confused. And with that... She was a ghost. <laughs> yeah. And with that, I'm going to pause here. Tara, what about you? What, what do you think about all this? I mean, it's basically you know, the simple, simple story that I've seen a lot of times. You got a girl who... Like something, but other people make fun of. Oh no! Wait, I'm getting all mixed up. <laughs> That's how much this has been repeated. Um, she's so she's getting make, made a fun of for being a witch, and then she goes to do her own thing, like read a book, and then she finds out that she loves it, and then she also finds out that a lot of people went to it. Kind of reminds me of me when I first got into MLP, and I found out a lot of people would make fun of me for it, but then I made a lot of great new friends. <laughs> Yay! And then it's also nice that Lotte is getting her wish of finally meeting the author and she's getting all these questions right because, you know, gets a crazy fan, you know. <laughs> and while I was watching this, though, I I mean, not going to go too far into this, but this part here, I actually thought Annabelle was like an evil spirit or just a ghost and the pen was the spirit. And once she gave it, then she teleported away. Makes sense, makes sense. And Silver, what about you? Well, I think you should be glad it's just teleported away, or the pen was like, I have no further need of you. Boom. God, no. Yes, I went dark. I went so very, very, very dark. But, well, if we're, if we're sharing stories, I remember when I was a Sailor Moon fan in high school, uh, I was at a comic book shop, and some guy saw a chippy Sailor Moon stand and said, oh, Sailor Moon, that show should die. Wow. And, and I just, I kept my head down and just kept thumbing through the latest issues just because I felt, I felt sort of embarrassed. So I think anyone who's felt rejected for what they enjoy can empathize with what, what Lotte went through. Although, as we saw in the opening, when she saw, uh, the der derisive comments, mm -hmm. she's a lot stronger than you, than she might let on at first because she can laugh it off as, these com these comments are kind of funny. Other people uh, would would probably feel hurt by uh, association. So that's not something to overlook. She's a lot tougher than she might let on. Although, if we're talking about knowing the various uh, the trivia and all the hyper details, I can't help but flash back to Rainbow Dash at a Daring Do convention. <laughs> And, you know, I'm sure there are fans out there who have that level of knowledge of every single facet and may even have every uh, book memorized. I'm not one of them. I know Harry wears, Harry Potter wears sneakers. Does that count? I guess. I don't know the brand or what he wears. What, a boo? Yeah. Wait, boo. Did, 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 Dis, did Disney start making brands? Welcome to a boo... Shoe wear. Don't worry, it's not made from monkeys. Yes, you hope. <laughs> oh, just, don't don't take us down that route. I uh, just last night watched Mojo named "See This Vest" the best Simpsons song. So you know, 
All right, bro. Uh, you know where the, you know where this is going. No, no, don't want to go. Don't want to go. Oh boy, but anywho, uh, let's carry on. So anywho, um, after Annabelle disappears, Lotte discovers something on the floor, and it's some kind of witching tool, a teleportation spell that anybody can use. And Lotte runs, trying to find Annabelle. Akko and Susie comes along and asks what happened. And Lotte asks them to try and find Annabelle. And this part here is a bit, well, silly. Because Akko parts for looking for Annabelle are ridiculous. While Susie is looking for mushrooms. Yes, you can clearly tell where her priorities are. So, after they take a break, they discuss about the pen. And the pen has a spirit inside. And Lotte can talk to spirits. Ako is surprised, yet uh, Susie is not. And tell her to take it down a notch because this is nothing special. So, no, no, I'm skipping a few things. Um, yeah, one of the few things is that Lotte doesn't really want to be the new author of Nightfall. She rather just read it and whatnot and enjoy it that way. Um, Akko here is kind of excited and tells Lotte that, hey, you can be the new author, you can do what your idol did and whatnot. And no, that, that's not her. That's not her. She rather be a supporter rather than a well, creator and whatnot. And this kind of opens uh, Akko's eyes to the situation. So anywho, uh, they continue on their search and ask the pen about where Annabelle is. So once they ask that question, I'm not really sure if they really got the answer that they were looking for. But yeah, they, they found her. They found her near a flower bit of uh, hydrangeas. Is that how you say it, Sarah? Uh, hydrangea. I think that's the... Uh, it, it has a weird... Uh, like if you look at the name of it, yeah, I'm just gonna post it there. Yeah, that's how you, that's how it's pronounced. I dream you. All righty then. All right then. So anyway, um, I was saying, she found Annabelle there, and well, I'm gonna pause that there because we got a lot to unpack. Um, Silver, what do you think? Well, honestly, I don't know if there's too much I can add to this section. I do like how they portray the spirit. It's not a whisper or or uh, anything frightening sounding. It's more. I'm so, wow, I sound like a I sound like a dog. You've been hanging out with two mage dogs. Well, at least it doesn't oh, sound like. You know? Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that would be pretty interesting if it was like that. I don't know how to feel when they say, "Oh, it's the pen that that chooses the writer." I mean. It's a little too heavy into destiny, in my opinion, and that's always a fickle topic in fiction. Uh, and I also, I gotta admire that Lotte knows herself well enough to know what she wants. At the same time, you, it's, the world needs supporters. So I, I feel like we've overemphasized that you have to be the leader. A leader without, a leader without supporters is just a person barking orders into the air. At the same time, I think Lotte may be selling herself short that she can take the lead on other things. But it, she doesn't have to take it in this case. It's not an either or, you know, uh, take a lead now or be a subservient for life. It's just not this thing. And I admire that about her. Uh, one of the fun thing about shy characters is those moments of inner strength or those surprising declarations. If it's someone is loud and boisterous and then they have a moment of fragility, they're somehow afraid it will diminish them. When a shy character is is bold and declarative, it makes you reevaluate them. What about you, Tara? Uh, I was just gonna ask. Uh, so, so you said you said you like shy characters, right? I think I've hinted at that in the past. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Why you like Fluttershy? Yeah. <laughs> and and let's see here. Then before her, Sailor Mercury was my favorite. Uh, let's see. Who are their shy characters? Yeah, I even have a soft spot for Neville Longbottom. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Eva, Jil e Eva, that blue hair chick? Well, that's not shy. That's emotionally stagnant uh, or repressed. Okay. 
I don't know Eva, so I'll just say stuff. <laughs> but yeah, actually, oh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I was just gonna say my claim, but you can keep going. Well, just that Shinji's the shy one in that, but he's <laughs> he's <laughs> oh my god, Sh- Shinji's too whiny <laughs> to be support fully supportive. <laughs> And then there's the, there then there's the most recent movie. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? Three point three three. Thank oh, you very God. much. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be very specific, Norman. And I'm just like, WTF, mate? <laughs> Boy, yeah. uh, that's funny. I I think we're thank you have a trauma <laughs> ban on Eva. <laughs> anyway, Tara, how about you? Well, there's not really much to talk about in this section that we just discussed, but the only thing I can very much talk about is I like how Akko's, uh pretty much trying to lean on to Lote, being like, hey, this is your lifelong dream, don't you want to do it? And instead of, like, uh, f- forcing her to be like, you got to do this, it's not like, just in ca- instead of just keep lingering it on, she's like, okay, I understand your choice. And then she's like, let's go find her now. And that's all? Yeah, that's all. There's not, not really much to say. <laughs> Alrighty then. So anyway, uh, like I mentioned previously, uh, Lotte discovers Annabelle there, and Annabelle doesn't want to take the pen back. But Lotte asks why, and they have this conversation about her self-esteem, because her books that she wrote, one of the few newer issues, are reviewed badly. Uh, A lot of people say that she shouldn't write anymore. She should just quit and whatnot. Like, most of most of them are negative comments about how the book sucks. But Lotte uh, sits down with Annabelle and tells her that, hey, I really like your books. I notice all the subtle hints that you uh, put in there and stuff. Like, she notices everything about the books. And she highly enjoys them and uh, Annabelle and Lotte have this heart to heart conversation about the books and whatnot and in the end Annabelle takes back the pen and writes a new novel chapter I don't know but anywho um, she's thankful for the experience that she has and Lotte and her group of friends go back to college or the school and yeah but let's just say that you do the crime you 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 pay the crime how, how, how is it do the crime take the time yeah yeah you you com- commit the crime you pay the time yeah, something like that. and while things are going on uh, in the background we see big ben oh big ben is that person oh okay <laughs> i wasn't expecting that <laughs> So, they're punished by swabbing the decks. Their punishment is swabbing the decks, and they just talk about their experience for today. And the only other reason why Lotte doesn't want to write the books is because she doesn't want to spoil the story for herself. So, yeah, it's a bit silly, but it's true. It's true. I mean, she's so young. Yeah. And I, I guess with that episode, ends so anyway um final thoughts so no sorry before final thoughts um what do you guys think silver well back uh, again lote shows a, a stronger uh stronger spirit than one might assume because you know she laughed off those comments but i understand that the the author who's the re- this is someone basically rejecting their efforts that's hard that's really that could be very painful and it's again a sign of what i call what i view as very poor criticism you could say okay i didn't like this because of this reason and this reason but then you go say oh this person should stop writing that is assigning yourself far too much authority to dictate how other people's careers should go you don't like it okay guess what someone else did the world is vast enough that this means something. So uh, I'm gonna say that if you if you ever throw out this person should stop writing, that's going too far. 
And granted, I've I've felt that sometimes. Like if you watch a Michael Bay movie, it's like I really don't like those. I really don't like Michael Bay movies. But I I don't have the authority to say he should stop making movies. I just won't go to them. But I'm glad that Lote could talk the talk the author back into taking up the role. And uh, I I think this episode does a lot to to really flesh out Lote. Dems my thoughts. Right. And Tara, who are you? Oh, I agree with well, Silver. It pretty much shows Lote being more open and more expressive because in the past she's always uh, more quiet, more timid, and less talkative. Like she, basically, like Fluttershy, how she kind of whispers to what she says and using a quiet voice, really being all shouty and happy and excited. And I. And, after seeing it for the first time and then watching through it again, it, it really does hit me and so many things. Like it hit me when I first attended BronyCon. It hit me for the um, when I went to start YouTube and then all these comments, like the negative comments. And at first, I'm like, when I first started, I'm like, eh. I mean, at first I got bothered by it, but then later on, it's like, I didn't really, I didn't really bother me as much. I take it to the criticism. Like I even did a test one time. One person. Uh, did a comment on one of my impressions of me doing Shining Armor, and they said it was that bad, and I should work on this or stuff like that. And I showed it to my cousin just to see what his reaction would say, and he was like, oh, that's kind of mean of this person, no? And then I explained to him, I'm like, well, if you look at it a different way, see, this person is telling me it's not that bad, and I need to work on something, which means I gotta improve on it. And then once I told him that, he's like, oh, okay, makes sense. It all depends on how the person looks at the comments. It could sound very harsh and mean, or it could be someone criticizing Criticizing you and giving you some advice on what to do. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Then anyway, uh, let's go to final thoughts. Um, Silver, once again. Oh, I thought we were already on final thoughts. Oh, that, that was kind of the you know um, last section of the digging. Oh my, my well, bad. I just did my final thoughts. My bad. <laughs> All right, no problem. Anyway, Silver. Well, I gotta say this is a great episode for Lotte. It it, it lets her be passionate outgoing, startling in some cases. Uh, especially love when she's describing the story to Akko and has basically recruited her into uh, all the posings. So I thought that was magnificent. So she joined the hurt then. Yep. Well, actually, by the end, I think Akko was saying I might uh, I might be a fan now. Nice. A- after she was so uh, resistant at first. And it's just fun to see, you know, you have closet fans, you have fans who will go but only in cosplay, which is also wonderful. Of course we're friends. Wait, you're my students. <laughs> Wait, there should be a big sign there when they first met. Oh, God. Well, maybe maybe the teacher is uh, is holding... Uh, how can I put this? The teacher is making sure to keep up the facade so they don't know. Uh, yes, could be, could be. It's bending the rule without breaking it, I guess. Makes sense. But it's just a really fun, well done piece, and uh, I I saw a lot of positive aspects of fandom in this. Even if the even if the story within the story is more akin to Twilight, Ugh. it's okay, man. It's okay. Is that okay? Uh, so anyway, uh, Tara, you already mentioned yours. Yes. Uh, then, well, as for me, I love this episode this episode just brings out Lotte's personality her interests her likes and from this point on I I feel like we can project some of our quote unquote uh, emotions feelings toward Lotte as a closet fan or something and yeah I mean I I, I guess this is how fanfic works because we latch onto something that we quote unquote enjoy and Oh man, the the ship fixed with Barbera later on. I, I can just imagine. I I can just imagine. <laughs> so yeah, um, this episode itself is a lot of fun, and having that, sorry, uh, and having Lotis mention that she rather be a, a a follower or a supporter rather than be or rather than following their icons and whatnot. It's something that you don't really hear a lot these days. Usually when you hear people say stuff similar to this, it's usually they want to become the Hokage 
or the best hero and whatnot. And in this one, nah, she, she just wants to enjoy the books, just wants to support her favorite author and stuff. And that's something cool, something amazing, yeah. Anyway, um, those are my thoughts. Um, if you actually, I want to add something, Norman. Uh, not to final thoughts, but you kind of missed an opportunity while going through the final scene. Oh. You, what you could have said is that the students made it back at school before nightfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man! All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, Silva, what are we going to do next week? Well, I think, uh, first off, I want to congratulate you both. I think you made it through this entire review without calling it My Little Witch Academia. Oh, no, I did. Well, you did. Did you? Because I you remember did? at the end of the last podcast oh, you did, the, 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 but not the, the, here. Okay. Well, either way, you kept it to a minimum. So good job all around. <laughs> yes, we are, we are very much in the pride of the now. But we are going to return to My Little Pony, I think. And talk about, well, set your faces to cry as the Cutie Mac Crusaders might be breaking up. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But there's something else, right? Oh, crikey. We get to meet Scootaloo's parents. Oh. Watch out. Wow. Woo-wee. There, there's a lot. Mind blown. So, there is a lot to unpack with this one. There is a lot to unpack with this one. Woo. So it turns out Scootaloo's not a mutant Paris sprite. <laughs> Too bad. Or at least with chickens. Or like Dusty Cat always say, live under a bridge under Rainbow Dash's house. But we join us next week for The Last Crusade. Also, here we go. I will now a- applaud your efforts this review. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, yes, very good. Very good. So, anyway, uh, yes, we will be doing ponies next week. A lot of fun. And yeah, stick around for that one. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Romasanzo. Uh, where can the good people find you, Silva? Well, you can find me lots of places. You can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Krill, or after the fact, I shall appear. You can find me on uh, Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can also find me on Patreon and just recently Kofi, uh, Kofi.com slash Silverquill. And so, uh, always appreciate the support. And you can find me on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays, posting editorials and, uh, comic reviews. Sweet. Go check them out, guys. He, he does things awesomely. He does things awesomely. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people, eh. well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they can just do a simple Google research, and I'm pretty sure they can find me on all of those things in an inch. Oh, wait, not inch, pinch. Yeah. <laughs> and they probably even find my Patreon page where they can donate either a tiny little dollar or my highest tier will go up to $10 a month. Oh, do it, guys. Uh, like I mentioned before, these guys are awesome, and you guys should support them too if you can. Because, well, they do awesome content. Like, if you like the MBS shows, review, discussion, podcast, thingy, jig that we do, uh, you'll enjoy theirs too. So anyway, um, yes. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also stitch your radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week free access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous I would like to thank Amy Black Knight Master Black Tristan and also Chucky thank you so much guys you are great so I have you know, so hello I am Cecile Frequil and I am Tortera and you guys see you next week with another fun yes sure see ya adios bye bye So wait, the, the fanfic that turned into a novel in our world is called Fifty Shades. What would Nightfall be called in their world? <laughs> Where's the wand?